Hi, this is Ben Ivey, the Fulfillment Artist. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to... I actually have no idea. How to, how to focus on your new life and not fall back into old behaviors. How to focus on your new life and not to fall back into old behaviors. Okay, that is what we're gonna to do today. So, there's five points, okay? Five points we're gonna to go to. The first thing is, Focus on what you want, right? Why is this important? I need you to focus on what you want in life, not on what you don't want. How often do people who start new things keep focusing back on all the crap that they're doing? They're saying, oh, well, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. What they're focusing on is all the things they did wrong instead of all the things they did right. You've got to make sure that as you're starting to move through your life, you're focusing forward. Does that make sense? Don't look back into the past. Focus forward to where you want to go. Because if you're constantly looking back, then it's going to be very difficult for you to move forward because you can't drive a car while looking in your rear view mirror. It's impossible. I mean, I've seen people in Shanghai do it and it's pretty crazy, but I would suggest your eyes are on the road and you're looking forward. Same with your life. If there's things that you're switching, focus on what it is that you want and keep your focus there because where focus goes, energy flows. And as you keep doing that on a more and more consistent basis and you start moving it forward, it's gonna be so, so, so much easier for you to be able to get there. Because ultimately, if I told you to close your eyes right now, so quickly close your eyes, if you're driving, don't do this, okay? But close your eyes and I want you to count everything that's blue in the room in five seconds, go. And you count, and you're like, okay, one, two, three, four, five. And you count everything that's blue in the room, and let's say you get 10, right? My guess is, not all of them are the exact same color of blue. Some of them could be green, some of them are turquoise, some of them are navy blue. But the fact is, is sometimes what we look for is often what we get. So if you're focusing on the things that you're doing right, that's what you're gonna see. But if you keep on focusing on things that you're doing wrong, even if they're not wrong, you may think they are, because that's what you're looking for. So it's really important for you to be able to focus on what you want, right? Number two is going to be, you need to create new routines, right? If you're gonna create a new behavior, ultimately it's your routines that are gonna help you consistently move forward in your life. It's those routines. Let's say you're managing your own business, okay? You're managing your own business and sometimes you get very stressed and overwhelmed. When you're stressed and overwhelmed, you analyze everything and, and the routine you get into is, oh my God, this is crazy. And you just sit down and you just have no idea what to do. And you just stare at your computer blankly like this. And you just get an analysis paralysis where you just have no idea what to do. It's too overwhelming. So you're focusing and you're ultimately, oh my God, what do I do? And you start, I don't know, playing a game or distracting yourself, or you start working on, or you start reading a book instead of doing what you need to do. Right, this could be one of the old behaviors that you have. So we have to create a new routine. Now, you've got to be able to replace old habits with these new things. So, let's say with the example that I gave of someone that's stressed who's running a business or managing everything, let's say that is what you're experiencing. Let's see what we could replace it with. Let's say you're feeling stressed, you're feeling like you don't know what to do. One strategy could be go speak to another manager or like your CTO or another person there that you can have this sort of conversation with and you can start bouncing ideas off it. Another thing, maybe you go for a walk and just clear your head, right? Maybe it's that you go to the gym for half an hour to just de-stress and, and that just allows you to reset and then you go back to it instead of wasting hours. So whatever it is, let's think for you what it is that causes you to fall back. Like what is that thing that just gets you really, really stressed out and what could you do differently to be able to interrupt it? I'll give you a great funny example. So I've recently found that I sometimes find it difficult, right, no matter where I'm in the world, to, to just deal with Wi-Fi and it just going down. Because I feel myself getting stressed. You know, I'm like speaking to a business owner on the other side of the world. They're in India, they're in Dubai. And I've got a time and I'm ready and I'm here. And then the Wi-Fi just goes down. And like for me, that makes me feel a little bit stressed. 
right? It hasn't actually happened that many times, right? Maybe like probably about three times. <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. But when that happens, I get really, really stressed. And I was thinking, you know, like, why is it that I get so stressed? And it's because ultimately my reaction is just, oh, why is this happening? Oh my God, what can I do? How do I fix the Wi-Fi? And, and I just get really, really stressed. So instead, now, I do something different, right? And this is, this is funny. So instead I go, okay. Right, and I say, if I can't control it, I'm letting it go. Right, brilliant. So I bring my arms up and I go, if I can't control it, I'm letting it go. And that is a brilliant strategy for me in order to just let go of things that I have cannot control whatsoever. Now since doing that, right, a train is late and I'm gonna be late for one of my speaking gigs. Right, I say, if I can't control it, I'm letting it go. I'll remember next time to get an earlier train. So think about how you can help yourself with this, this new routine in order to consistently be able to create the habits that you want to create, okay? So next is create a new environment. How do you create a new environment? Well, uh, let's use an example that's easy. Like, let's say you are in your office. Okay, and usually you're very, very disorganized. Okay, and the reason that you're disorganized, you just got papers everywhere and you don't really have any filing system or things to put away, right? Maybe the environment is you have a big folder to be able to file everything, right? And you've got a shredder there. So it either goes in the file or it gets shredded. Okay, that's an option, right? You know, and then perhaps uh, just adding into the new routine. The new routine is every week on the Friday afternoon, you've got all your papers, you either shred it or you put it in the file. And that is, is, a, is a way to tailor your environment, right? You've got a shredder there and you've got um, like a folder to be able to put everything in. Another way to, to think about your environment is, uh, I mean, let's say you're someone, I mean, this is easy. Let's say you're someone that wants to optimize their health. Okay, so you're someone that is saying, okay, you know what, I want to optimize myself, I want more energy, I want more, I just want more of me, and I want to have more energy in the day to be able to do what I want to do. So let's say you're optimizing that system. If you have things in your house which is going to degrade or sort of damage your system as you're trying to upgrade it, that's going to be difficult. Let's say you like, I don't know, crisps or chips for, for those in America, right? So let's say that's what you really, really enjoy. If you've got loads of them in the house, it's gonna be very difficult for you to be able to optimize your health because it's such an easy thing for you to do. So tailor the environment. Instead of having crisps, right, replace it with something, like I said before. So that's we're replacing these crisps with, I don't know, nuts, something like that, okay? So instead of you reaching for that, you're going for nuts and that's gonna give you much more energy than crisps. Okay, so once again, we are tailoring your environment to be able to help you move forward, right? Number four is gonna be understand your why. So this is incredibly important. In order for you not to fall back, you have to be able to understand why you're doing this. What is the purpose? What is the big why, right? I spoke to a business owner recently. It was a really interesting conversation. She has done very well. She has been flying for the past, like three, four years, and then she took a year and a bit off, okay? So she took a year and a bit off, and she just did nothing. She traveled, she chilled out, she just relaxed. And she's fine. She doesn't need to work, she's already built up her business, uh, she's getting passive income, she's fine. But now she's like, uh, what's there to do now? It's just, there's nothing she can do. It's She's just, there, because there's nothing motivating her. She doesn't know the why of what she's doing. She's comfortable. Don't be comfortable. In anything in life, it's better to be in a worse situation because you're gonna change. If you get comfortable, you are gonna be stuck. You have to get uncomfortable. So to understand your why is understand why you really wanted to do this. And you've got to remind yourself, because we're humans, we forget. So imagine if you remind yourself every single day right? How important it is for you to be able to set up this new product in the business or to be able to find that man of your dreams or whatever it is. And you consistently understand why that is so important to you. Then your life is going to change. It's something that we talk about, uh, you know, daily power. 
in that daily power routine that you have, you've got to be able to include how important it is to understand that why of what it is that you're doing and how you're going to create it. Last and final point, okay, is probably the most important one, is about conditioning your identity of who you are. Now, let's say someone is trying to quit smoking, okay? Someone that has never smoked before, she goes, no, no, I'm not a smoker. That's not who I am. Bam, that person's never gonna smoke. Someone who's trying to quit smoking, nah, they're still gonna do it, because they're trying. But when you start to say, you know, that is not part of who I am, I do not accept that. When you get to that stage, it's part of your identity, then things change. So what I mean by conditioning your identity is conditioning this new life that you want to be able to live and who you are and who you're gonna be whilst living that. Right now, I, I refuse to be someone that is angry all the time. I will be funny, right? I will be ridiculous. I will be someone that is loving. I will be compassionate, okay? And we start to understand these things that are linked to your identity of what it is that you're gonna be as you go throughout your life in creating this new life. Because ultimately, as you start to condition yourself, you're not going to fall back into an old behavior that is not part of who you are, right? If you used to think, oh, I used to be a chocoholic and I used to like chocolate, and you say, no, no, I don't do chocolate. That is not part of who I am. I optimize my energy. I'm not going to have white chocolate. If anything, I have dark chocolate, right? Something like that. So ultimately, it's conditioning that identity. So I hope you've enjoyed these five points, okay? So it's focus on what you want. Create that new routine. Create the new environment. Ultimately, understanding your why and conditioning your identity. If you use these five tools, they are gonna, they are gonna really help you shift so you're not gonna fall back because you're using these and they are gonna exponentially help you move forward. So with that said, I really hope that you can start to create that life for yourself, okay? If you want to align everything, right? Make sure that you come along to one of our seminars, whether it's Release the Real You or the Fulfillment Artist Intensive, or you come and see one of either myself or one of the Fulfillment Artists in training uh, that we have, because ultimately that's going to help you shift or get someone to help you align yourself. Now with that said, I hope you can create that alignment, move forward, create that life that you want, and I'll speak to you very soon.